In problem three, I'm given the formula v equals four-thirds pi r cubed, and I'm told to solve for r. I'll start by rewriting the formula down here, just so I have a little bit more room on the page to manipulate it. Now we need to solve for r, so we need to first isolate this r cubed, which means I need to get rid of all this other stuff. So what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 3 over 4 pi. And of course I have to do the same thing on both sides. And on the right, the 4's cancel out, and the pi's cancel out, and the 3's cancel out. So all I'm left with on the right is the r cubed. And I'll rewrite the equation like this. r cubed equals everything else that's over here. And I'll write it like this. 3v over 4 pi. And then to solve for r, I need to take the cubed root. So I take the cubed root of both sides and I get r equals the cubed root of 3v over 4 pi. And that's my answer. Now we could do a little bit more algebra to get the fraction out from under the radical sign, but I'm going to leave it in this form because that is probably the most readable form you might recognize this formula, v equals 4 thirds pi r cubed, is the formula for the volume of a sphere. If you have a sphere of radius r, so imagine that's r, that distance there, the volume of the sphere is given by that formula, 4 thirds pi r cubed. In example 4, I have an equation from physics, x equals v0 t plus 1 half a t squared. This formula tells you the position of an object x. If you know its initial velocity, v0, that little zero just means the velocity at time zero, or the initial velocity, and how fast it's accelerating, a, and then t, which shows up here and here, is the time. So you want to know how far the object travels in a given amount of time. Well, it depends on that value, t, and it also depends on how fast it was moving at the start and how fast it's accelerating. Now you don't actually have to know all of that to solve this for a. We're told to solve it for a. We just want to do the algebra and manipulate this equation so that a is isolated. So here's what we'll do. To solve for a, first I need to isolate the term that contains a. So I'm going to subtract v0t from each side. And on the right, the v0t and the minus v0t will cancel each other out. And I'm left with x minus v0t on the left equals one-half at squared. And then to solve for a, I need to multiply both sides by 2 over t squared. And that way everything on the right will cancel out except for the a. And I have to do the same thing on both sides. So over here I multiply by 2 over t squared. And then on the right, you can see the 2 down below and up top can cancels out, and the t squareds cancel out. And I'm left with a all by itself. And that a will be equal to all of this. So a equals, and I'll write it like this. I'll write 2x minus v0t over t squared. Now it is solved for a.